Assalamu alaikum dear students. I am Dr. Tamkeen Salim. Welcome you to the lecture 24 for week 12 and the topic is HIV AIDS. The learning objectives for the present lecture are what is HIV AIDS, what are the stages of HIV and we will also focus on the role of health psychology with AIDS. AIDS is a disease in which there is severe loss of body's cellular immunity, greatly lowering the resistance to bacterial, viral, fungal and parasitic infections. Cancerous and other opportunistic diseases can also be caused. Because without the immune system, the body cannot protect itself against many organisms that may invade the body and may cause any kind of damage or any kind of other disease. The danger from AIDS come from the opportunistic infections that start when the immune system no longer function effectively. AIDS is actually the result of exposure to a contagious virus that is known as human immunodeficiency virus, commonly known as HIV. In order to understand the symptoms of HIV, it is important to understand the stages of HIV because there are different symptoms of HIV as uh, the individual who may be having um, HIV or AIDS, uh, the individual may be having different symptoms depending on in which stage the individual is present. There are three stages of HIV. Stage 1 is known as acute HIV infection, stage 2 is known as clinical latency, and H stage 3 is called AIDS. Stage 1, acute HIV infection. Within 2 to 4 weeks after the infection with HIV, about two-thirds of people may have flu-like illness. This is the natural body's response to HIV infection. And the flu-like symptoms may include fever, chills, rash, night sweats, muscle aches, sore throat, fatigue, swollen lymph nodes, and mouth ulcers. These symptoms can last anywhere from a few days to several weeks, but some people do not have any symptom at all during this early stage of HIV, due to which it often goes untreated and undiagnosed. And many times, even when people uh, experience these symptoms, they treat it like flu. Stage 2, clinical latency, is also known as chronic HIV infection stage. At this stage, the virus still multiplies, but at a very low level. <clears throat> people at this stage may feel sick or have any symptoms. Without HIV treatment, people can stay in this stage for around 10 to 15 years, but a few uh, patients move through this stage very fast. If one takes HIV treatment every day exactly as prescribed and get and keep an undetectable viral load, one can protect his or her health and prevent transmission to others. <coughs> the point that is undetectable viral load you can see a picture on the right below right corner it is indicating two different test tubes one is indicating viral load which is undetectable and the other is indicating viral load that is very much detectable the point is that when we say that viral load is undetectable or undetectable viral load is there when it is tested actually so clinically this means that there are fewer than 50 copies of HIV per milliliter of the blood which means that it is undetectable viral load which means that the person would not transmit it to others but if the viral load is detectable one can transmit HIV during this stage even when one have no symptoms. Therefore, it's important to see the healthcare provider to get oneself checked as well as take the treatment so that this viral load would stay undetectable so that it would not get transmitted to others. Stage three is known as AIDS. If an individual has HIV 
and one is not on HIV treatment, eventually the virus will weaken the body's immune system and one will progress to AIDS, that is acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. This is the late stage that is a third stage of HIV infection and it comprise of symptoms like rapid weight loss, recurring fever, extreme and unexplained tiredness, prolonged swelling of the lymph glands in armpits, groins or neck, diarrhea uh, which uh, lasts longer than a week, sore or in the mouth, anus or genitals, pneumonia, red, brown, pink or purple blotches on or under the skin or inside the mouth, nose or the eyelids. There is also memory loss, depression and other neurological disorders. HIV is spread only in certain body fluids from a person who has HIV. The fluids um, may be blood, semen, rectal fluids, vaginal fluids or breast milk. HIV is spread mainly by having male-to-male um, -male sexual contact or sharing the injections uh, of drug equipment such as needles with someone who has HIV. Similarly, heterosexual um, contact or as mentioned that fluids like uh, breast milk or vaginal fluids may um, lead to uh, transmission of HIV. So similarly, uh, it may be transmitted during the birth process from mother to the baby. Further, uh, on how HIV infections may be managed, it is important that uh, people um, who are indulgent or who experience HIV epidemics affect four different populations, men who have sex with men, injection, drug users, heterosexuals, and children born to HIV, positive mothers, as discussed previously. The psychologists are involved in HIV epidemic by encouraging the protective behaviors, counseling infected people to help them cope with living with a chronic disease, and helping the patients adhere to the complex medical regimes that have changed HIV infections to a manageable chronic disease. During the early years of epidemic, psychologists contributed to both primary as well as secondary prevention efforts. Primary, primary prevention uh, included changing behaviors in order to decrease HIV transmission. However, secondary prevention includes helping people who are HIV positive to live with the infection. It may involve counseling people with HIV testing helping patients deal with social and interpersonal aspects of the disease, and also helping the patients adhere to their complex treatment regimes. Similarly, psychologists encourage for the use of protective measures. That is, they are educated that people can protect themselves against the infection with HIV by changing their behaviors that are high-risk behaviors for acquiring infections, like an going for unprotective sexual contact or sharing the needles with an infected person. People who believe that they may be infected with HIV as well as those who know that they are can benefit from various psychological intervention. It can help them combat depression. It can help them combat other mental health or negative emotion related issues. Those people who engage in high-risk behaviors may have difficulty deciding whether to be tested for HIV or not. So in these circumstances, the psychologist can provide both information as well as support for these people. Generally, when people hear about their diagnosis regarding HIV AIDS, they uh, tend to react because of the reason that they think that there is no future for them. They will live the ill health for the rest of their life as well as they consider that it is terminal and they just lose all hope in life and living. So the need, uh, role of the counselor is to clarify the myths and misunderstandings of management of HIV infection. Treatment related stress may also be observed in such people. Generally, what we see or what we say is that um, 
the commonly known treatment of for hiv is known as hart that is highly active antiretroviral therapy hart so generally people do not know about uh, this particular treatment and they are very much um, confused and very much worried about the treatment of uh, HIV. <clears throat> However, uh, when people actually indulge in the program of uh, HEART, it is important to um, show adherence to the drug. It is said that 95% or above is required for maximum viral suppression. And long-term adherence to HEART is a real challenge as non-adherence would result in suboptimal viral suppression, which may lead to treatment failure. On the other hand, patients with good drug adherence may also be challenged by their transient uh, diarrhea and nausea or longer lasting other problems like neuropathy. So people have such kind of issues and they, while having the problem, while having the treatment, they face um, similar issues and problems. Uh, people living with uh, HIV AIDS uh, may have relationship and sexual behavioral problems. Sexuality becomes an important issue of concern for them. And there is also possibility that they may continue to indulge in unprotected high risk sexual behaviors, uh, which may be problematic for others because the others uh, may get infected by that this uh, unsafe uh, sexual behavior of the individual. So again, there is counseling that is required. Psychosocial assessment of a newly diagnosed HIV infected patient is very much important. It is important to screen out the functioning level uh, in occupation functioning, social functioning, and sources of social support or supports which are available. After the assessment, um, psychologists uh, or the social workers uh, may, may carry out uh, an, uh, a detailed interview with their client and then uh, may try to um, clarify the misunderstandings and myths of the patient and may also focus on what are the mental health problems or if the individual is indulgent in uh, substance abuse. So the treatment would be always required for that as well as well as they are needed to be uh, taught independent living skills. Psychological assessment and intervention. For the psychological assessment and intervention, they need to be screened out for depression or mood uh, issues, management of stress, as well as if there may be some kind of uh, anxiety problems or uh, what sort of psychological intervention can be helpful for them. Similarly, there are support groups which are for uh, people living with uh, HIV AIDS as well as for their caregivers which may uh, help them uh, because it's a forum to share feelings and experiences with each other and people learn from each other which may help them to uh, support their living. Other treatment can be CPT, Cognitive Behavioral Group Treatment, uh, which is widely applied to patients of various mental and physical problems. Uh, similarly, um, such program can be used for HIV uh, clients or patients or where we can use um, cognitive restructuring of the maladaptive thoughts. Um, they can be taught uh, life skills or uh, skills in order to modify their thoughts and their behaviors. They can indulge in relaxation exercises. They can um, indulge in uh, change of uh, health behaviors as well as they may be taught with different coping skills. Counseling on drug adherence is the most important aspects and then they may be taught regarding the secondary prevention that is counseling on safer sex.